So headlights on in three, two, one. Stumbles, recovers fairly quickly. AFR kind of changes. I don't have AFR corrections at idle. All right, today I'm gonna have a lot of fun with the idle valve. And more specifically, I'm gonna be talking to PWM or pulse width modulated idle valves than anything else. I'm not gonna cover really steppers and I'm not gonna cover on off, uh, mainly because I don't have them. So I don't really find too much value in talking about something I don't have. Uh, I don't wanna just talk to talk. I wanna talk to actually do something. So in this case, I'm in my system and I've gone to start up idle. I've gone to idle control. And one of the things I'm done there is basically my settings and where they've been at for a while. So up first, you have the idle control type. You have on off. This would be for the old school valves. Uh, my car originally came with the on off. It uh, simply just, when you started up the car, it heated up an element either by coolant temperature or by electronics to the point that the idle valve would be open and give it more air. And as it heated up, it would slowly close the gap until it was at a slower idle. So that's the on off valve. Uh, then we have the PWM open loop. No matter what, if you're starting off a project, start with open loop before you ever try a closed loop. There's no point in trying to get closed loop up and working if you have no idea where to start with with open loop. And I'll show you that here in a second. Then you have the steppers. I'm not really gonna cover the steppers, but if you're doing some type of GM car or other cars like that, um, they're pretty, neat but they do take some time and a lot of people have done very good write-ups on how that works uh, easily find uh, those by searching around all right so mine is a little bit unique i have one of the old bosch three wild style idle valves so you'll notice here it says number of outputs is two now it's a three wire one of the wires is taken up by power so because that is taken up by power, I have two wires run to the speed we know. I showed that last time on my little video where I called that out. Um, but these two wires are kind of polar opposites. If I ground one of the wires, it will open it. If I ground the other wire, it will close it. When I wired it up to uh, my speed we know, I had it reversed. So the one I thought was going to open it was actually the one that was going to close it. And Maybe I just didn't think about which way it was going. Either way, it didn't really matter. And that's probably why I didn't take the time to really test it out fully as I was wiring. And I can easily swap at any point in time. But that's what this idle valve direction is. I have it set to reverse because uh, when it gives to wire number one, it starts grounding that out. Instead of closing it, it would actually open it and give it more air. Uh, so that's why it's set to reverse. Normal is the other option, uh, but that's there. Okay. Here is the fun one, idle valve frequency. There is a lot of debate on this. Now, a lot of people say, and this is where I get to prove them wrong, a lot of people say that idle valve frequency really doesn't matter as much on open loop, or sorry, on closed loop. It matters on open loop more so than closed loop. I don't think that's necessarily true because as you're calling out the frequency, you get a usable range. That usable range, if you have too high of a frequency, you actually shorten the window, and that's bad. If you get it too low, then what you do is you have this really big window, but it can actually flip on you and start doing more damage. So as the frequency of the valve is expecting it, that's what's going to work out in your favor. It's kind of unique, um, but what happens if I set this frequency way too low, I get kind of two spots of function on my valve. Sounds kind of weird, but just hang with me. I knew, I had theory that this was a 60 hertz valve by someone else that supposedly found this out. Now, a lot of people went in there and they debunked him and said it's a 100 hertz valve. I, I don't know. I'm going to test that out. So that's one of the main points that I want to do is uh, I'm going to run two different tests. So I'm, first of all, is I'm going to see, okay, what value does it idle at? And then if I peg that value up by a consistent amount, how much RPM change is there? And what I'm hoping to see is if I'm probably going to pick five points. So if I go from, let's say, a 40 to a 45, if it idles at 1,000 RPM at 40 and maybe 1,300 at 45, well, I know there's that 300 or 300 RPM range from that five points of adjustment. What I want to see, though, is I want to see the littlest change in RPM by the most points of adjustment. So it'd be nice that if maybe at 60 hertz, 
instead of taking five steps to get to that uh, 1300, if it took 10. Because what I'm doing at that point in time is I'm saying you can really dial this valve in to get it to exactly the right RPM. If it's constantly saying, well, 40 drops it, you know, to 1000 RPM, but if I go to 41, it's trying to run at 1100 RPM, I'm losing my visibility into really fine tuning that. So Hertz is a really, or frequency is going to be a really important thing here. And that's the first thing I'm going to test. So what I'm going to do to complete this test is I'm going to change it from closed loop to open loop. You'll notice all my screen changes right there. I'm then going to go ahead and run this test in, uh, in 120 Hertz. And specifically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my duty cycle and I'm going to start playing around with the targets and raise and lower. Now, I played around a moment ago to kind of get my feet wet, make sure, well, actually, I played around with this uh, months ago, um, and so I played around just a second or two ago, make sure that I'm not remembering things wrong, and now I'm going to run my test. So I'm going to do it in increments of 20 hertz. So I'm going to start at 120, I'm going to go down to 100, then I'm going to go to 80, then I'm going to go to 60, and I'm going to try 40 last. I think by that point in time, I'm going to get a, a curve. What I'm hoping doesn't happen is that everything points that it needs to go to a higher hertz level. I don't really want to get in the 200 hertz level. I don't really want to go up that high. That seems just very abnormal. It's not something I'm used to seeing, so I don't expect it. But if my test shows that it needs to go that high, then, well, congratulations. I just figured out something for you guys and saved everyone else some time. Uh, you can see right here, here is the PWM duty. This is your open loop. It doesn't care what RPM you're at. It cares what value you're telling that idle valve to work at. So I'm going to go ahead, start up the car, get it warmed up. I'm going to run through some tests, take some pictures, plot it out, and we'll go from there. All right, so here's my test and how I ran it. I really want you to pay attention to the values of the idle valve here, and then to pay attention to the RPM that's in the upper left corner here. So that's kind of the main thing. So I started off with 120 and I drove these around for a few days. And so I knew what they were. So here's the high 120 where I just bumped it up five points. Then here's 100 hertz. Essentially, you'll notice that I'm moving the idle valve numbers all together. So that way you're not getting any type of small sway from them, but they're all working out in that regard. So I just went through and I said, okay, first I'm gonna do 120, drove it around for two days, 100, two days, drove it that way. The same with 80, 60, and then all the way down to 40. I found something interesting as I drove 40 around for a little bit. My car acted a little bit different than I expected it would, and I'll show you a data log of what it was doing and how that was affecting it. Anyway, what really matters, though, is the ultimate collection of all these numbers. So I put together a quick little Google spreadsheet, and you'll see here, here is what my results were. Now I've plotted it out just simply put in a little graph. You can see 60 hertz had the most resolution. So what I was looking for is I moved it at a consistent value, so those five points, how much did it affect RPM? And I'm looking for the one that had the greatest resolution, and that means least amount of RPM that it raised. So it sounds kind of weird when I put it that way, but trust me, it's what I'm looking for because I wanted to make sure if it moves one little point, that it's really affecting it how it needs to be affecting it. So there's 60 degrees there, and that's what my result came to. So I kind of proved it that way. All right, PID, proportional, integral, and differential. There's a certain method to my math and madness as I'm going through and tuning this. What it's been described to me in the past and how I've usually done it is to start with I, integral. Now, what this will allow you to do is its ability to hit its target. So I went through and tested this as I would put a number in there. I would blip the throttle a little bit. I'd let go and see how long it took for it to actually hit the target. During this time, I had P and D set to 1. So very lowest number I could get to, where they're still doing something, but really not affecting how I'm doing it. So once I got that in there, I kept raising it and raising it until I finally got to a point where it started to fluctuate and it started fighting with itself. It would correct and then overcorrect a little bit. And I said, okay, I backed it off to a reasonable point there. And uh, I found that quite a high number, I found out. But uh, essentially, that's the process that I did. And I did this with every single hertz as well, just to make sure that I wasn't doing anything wrong there. Then I went to the P. The best way I can describe the P is the accelerated pedal. So basically, as you're going through and you're tuning this uh, idle valve or any other PID setup, 
what you're saying is the p value is like its ability to accelerate so if it dips below its target value it will hit the p value and say this is how fast i'm going to accelerate to get back to my value and then um that's all it will do so it's kind of that accelerator pedal now you can't drive a car with just an accelerator pedal so that's where the d or differential value comes into play but what you want to do is make sure that both these values are within a reasonable range where you're not fighting against each other and saying that gas brake, gas brake, gas brake, driving yourself insane. So I went through and I did all these tests kind of the same way I did with uh, the Hertz testing to try and figure out which one gave me the most resolution. I actually drove it around and said, okay, which one actually performs better? So just because I see this on paper, does that actually translate to real life? So uh, I went through and I found some values and I'll show you those uh, next here. All right, I wanna show a few things here. So in this case, I've got my car up and running. You can see it right there. I'm gonna come over here to the P settings. I'm gonna delete what's in there and I'm gonna put it at 50. What I wanna show you, hard to type when your phone is in hand. I wanna show you how it starts to hunt. So let's change it to 50. You see it start to hunt. So what's going on in this situation, I'll just click the unmute button, is the P is like the accelerator. It says, okay, I'm gonna hit the gas when I need to. So as it dips below the target, it says, oh, need gas, and I'm gonna go for it. The D is like the decelerator, it's like the brakes. It's how much brakes do you wanna apply. So in this case, I give it a reasonable amount of accelerator. So I turned it back, I'll go ahead and apply it. You know, so as soon as I kick it back to where I had it, it's going to go more smooth. So as you're tuning the PID function, you want to make sure you first start with the I. You get that kind of nailed into where you want. You can pretty much crank up that one until it starts to, you know, hunt. The idea between the I is it's uh, how well can it get to its target. Uh, P is going to be the accelerator pedal in this sense. Okay, if it dips below my target, this is what it's going to behave. And D is going to be like your brake pedal. It says, okay, I went over my target, so now I'm going to slam on the brakes. So if you have those values too high on P and D, what it's going to do is gas brake, gas brake, gas brake, annoy the crap out of you. So that's the idea behind that to get that kind of uh, flowing correctly there. All right, so I've got it to about where I want it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach over and turn on the headlight switches. Watch the RPM there. So headlights on in three, two, one. Stumbles, recovers fairly quickly. AFR kind of changes. I don't have AFR corrections at idle. Uh, I just don't like them. Uh, they drive me nuts, but there are ways around that. For the time being, they're off, okay? Uh, up next, I'll turn, well, I already had the fan on uh, just because of default. So now I'll do the override. I'll turn off the fan. RPM goes up, it recovers quite well. And now I'll turn off the headlights goes up, recovers quite well. Now I'll do the opposite. I'm gonna turn on the, the headlights one more time fast, and then I'll go turn on the fan very fast. So headlights, fan. Still keeping it right there at about where I want it to be. Uh, overall, I'm happy. So these are the settings I came up with. I've got my P set to, uh, proportional is set to 15. I've got my integral set to 75. And uh, D, the last one is set to just one. I mean, that is pathetically low, but if I start cranking it up, it starts to fight too much. It's, it's acting like that brake pedal. It's just getting massed too quickly, and I didn't like it. So I had to leave the D set very, very low, not at zero, but at one. And then all the rest, that's where I came out to be. So when I was talking through my Hertz kind of testing there in the middle section, there was one thing I made mention of that I found interesting when I did 40 Hertz. What was interesting about it is that uh, I'd get sync losses. And I have no idea why I'd get sync losses just by playing with the hertz of a idle valve. I'm sure there's some type of interference or uh, frequency that uh, just messes with it, but that's what happened. So here in this data log, what you'll see is anytime that I gave a little bit of gas, I would lose sync lock as soon as the uh, idle valve dropped to the minimal value. It was the strangest thing. It only happened on 40 hertz. As soon as I went to 60, it went away. And it was only happening when the engine was cold. Once the engine was up to temperature, it was fine. 
So just the strangest thing, there was something going on there, which I couldn't quite explain, but this is what was catching in the data log. So that brings me up to my next point, the last one, which I'll show as a screenshot, which is those minimal and max values of the idle valve. These are very important because what you want to have happen is that it's within the usable range. So you want to set the high value to basically, if you're going out there and crank it on a cold day, what's the highest that idle valve needs to be at to be able to make sure you're hitting the RPM that you need to be. And then vice versa, when the car is warm, what's the minimal value it needs to be at to allow your car to idle with you know no load, no fans, no anything like that, the electrical load that can cause it a little bit of strain. And so that's where I put that there. So it allows me to get a good range of motion. One thing I should know is with my idle valve, if I put that value low enough, it will stall the car. My idle valve keeps my car running at all points in time. Uh, my throttle blade is close to the point where it does not um, keep the car running on its own. So just be aware that's part of the reason why I did this is because I really wanted to give all the control to my idle valve. Uh, I know it sounds kind of weird, but to be able to really do a great job. I haven't been able to trust my idle valve like that in the past, so this was kind of new territory, but it's something that I wanted to do uh, to be able to kind of increase how it drives. Well, there's a lot of reasons behind it, but uh, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that that you're just curious about. Thanks for hanging in there. Stay tuned.